Oh, it smells intoxicating in here. Located in beautiful Santa Fe, the Santa Fe School of Cooking is an internationally acclaimed recreational culinary school in foods of the Southwest. Recently voted one of the top three things to do in Santa Fe by TripAdvisor and OK Magazine, the school offers an array of Southwest cooking classes taught by some of the best chefs in Santa Fe. And I'm happy to say Nicole Curtis Ammerman, a Santa Fe native, is the manager and director of the school. Hello there, Hi, Nicole. thanks for having us. Thanks for being here. And happy to also say Chef Michelle Retzer brings 26 years of experience to the Santa Fe School of Cooking. Good what, morning. What did you start in the womb? Yes. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you both here, really. Thank you very much. I want to first talk about the fact that this is a mother-daughter team effort. Because not your us. mother, Nicole. No, they're no, not mothers. <laughs> but Nicole's mother, Susan Curtis, actually founded the school 23 years ago to showcase the distinct cuisine of the region. So what sets your school apart from any other school that's evolved over the years? I think that that is part of what sets us apart, is that my mom, Susan Curtis, basically had a midlife crisis and said, I want to open a cooking school featuring the local foods of New Mexico yeah. and celebrate food, farming, agriculture, wine, and the unique food history. And so, um, you know, we have legs to stand on. We've been doing this a really long time. Mm -hmm. And we were celebrating local before local was really the in word. Right, right. So. And it really has become so much more in. Even just mm -hmm. doing the show, you know, people really appreciate that. And what better place to celebrate local ingredients and the yeah. farming community. And really, I mean, there's, there's hands-on cooking classes which really make a difference too. Talk a little bit about that. Well, when we opened, we only did demonstration style classes and then a few years in, we realized that different people learn different ways and that we mm -hmm. needed to also offer hands-on. Yeah. So we do um, hands-on classes and demonstration style classes. They're really oh. two totally different formats. And um, yeah, there's a picture of a hands-on one there. Nice. And so just depending on your learning style, you need to choose what's best for you, but we really mix them up so that you have a choice. Well, and also the school gets people together. It gets families and friends and mm -hmm. coworkers together. Tell us a little bit about the special events that you offer to make that happen. We're really busy with special events. We're okay. very popular with like corporate uh, getaways, team nice. building. Um, girls Getaway, very popular Ooh, with the I Girls Getaway weekends. Um, family reunions, bridal showers. It's just a great way. Cooking really brings people together. I so mean, it's a really, fun thing to it do does. Together. You think about your home and you think about where do you all end up? In the kitchen. In the kitchen, right? right, right. I mean, and your school's added some specialty classes as well. So you've got uh, what? Walking tours and you've got One company nice, boot camps. That's right. Kind, One right? of the nice things about having a small family run operation is that you don't have to, you know, have an idea and run it through corporate America and okay. see what happens. So that's I just so come true. up with these crazy ideas and some of them have been very successful. We do restaurant walking tours where mm -hmm. you can um, meet at the school and then Chef Michelle or one of our other chefs guides you around to meet some of Santa Fe's top chefs, oh, try that. their food, have some wine, you spend the afternoon eating and drinking. It's a blast. That's mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. Culinary boot camp I came up with is a way to fill up the space in the slow season because it's a tourist town and it fluctuates with the number of For people sure. there. Yeah. And, uh, and then we do cooking classes out in a vineyard in Nambe and it's a great way to learn about the Ooh. wine and, and, and then celebrate the food at the same time. That's oh my right. gosh. Well, the school's been in the location just off the Santa Fe Plaza since the beginning, but now you're moving this summer, right? We are. On July 1st, Ooh. we'll be in a brand new location, twice That's the size. Exciting. It's so exciting. And uh, we will. Mm -hmm. we, we actually have two kitchens, so we'll be able to run two classes at the same time, hands-on and demonstration. We have a great little patio for outdoor classes. Nice. So we're really excited about our move. Oh, congratulations on that. Thank and, you. And the school staff and the chefs really, they bring varied backgrounds and special interests to the class. So, Michelle, what's your background? My background, I'm originally from El Paso, Texas. Oh, nice. Uh, I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area and then in 1996 went back to El Paso when my grandmother was ailing and oh. um, well it was really because of her that all of this happened. Really? It was her kitchen that um, I learned about the flavors of southwestern food. Um, oh. Chorizo, beans, tortillas. Oh, yum. I would wake up in the morning at her house and uh, I would smell all of those things and I thought, God, if this isn't heaven, it's got to be close by. <laughs> so for me, Southwestern food is, is very closely linked to every positive memory that I have. Oh, so great. I love to when I got the opportunity to move to Santa Fe and really begin to explore Southwestern food and the beauty of it and the, and the ancient nature of this food mm -hmm. and the people that lived here for thousands of years, um, really kind of brought it all together for me. I have a passion in history. Oh, wow. So um, being able to relate food to history and food to culture yeah. and all of those things and food to um, food to, to politics and not necessarily green or <laughs> blue or red, blue or red. red. <laughs> but green. Green and red. <laughs> well, be, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, especially here in New Mexico. So absolutely. what we're gonna do today yeah. is, um, we're going to do an ancho chili relleno, and most okay. people, when they think chili rellenos, think the the New Mexico green relleno. But exactly. this is a really, really nice departure from that. Okay. So what oh, I fun. did was I took these um, ancho chili rellenos, mm. and I soaked them in um, a 
basically a brine of orange juice, a little bit, bit of that's vinegar, mm. some peel and seal, which is a Mexican brown sugar that's left over from the um, molasses making process. Okay. So I took a little bit of that, and what I'm going to do is I soaked it in here, and now I'm going to take this. And see, this chili already had a, a little opening in it, so I'm just going to exploit that okay. and open this up. Perfect. Now, ancho means wide in Spanish. Ancho? And, and this, this differentiates this from the New Mexico red, which tends to be very narrow and long. This right. is kind of short, fat, and squatty body. <laughs> I like that. That's kind of how I feel right now. i the truth after eating all weekend. <laughs> after the weekend, right, yeah. Well, that means it was a good weekend. It always is. So yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and this right here is our, um, this is our chorizo oh, and pinto favorite. bean stuffing. And okay. Um, if you want to lighten this up, you could easily leave the chorizo out and just use beans and mm. corn. If you were doing this for a vegan, I would put a little bit of rice okay. and bean and maybe some mushrooms so you get a complimentary protein in there. Good point, good um, point. If you're going to do this for breakfast, you could put a fried egg over it. Ooh, I like so, these options. And this is, this is one of the rellenos that we do in our, in our hands-on relleno class. That's great. So we do, we do a lot of different ones, and this one I think is probably one of my favorites because it has so many uses. Now, if you wanted to do this with like shrimp, uh -huh. that would work. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a lot of options. Yeah, and I love right. how you, I mean, I can just tell, just if I was taking your class, I could tell how much passion you have for what you do. And like you said, it, there's so many great memories for you associated with Southwest Cooking. And I love that you're giving other people an opportunity to create new memories with food. And I think that's wonderful. Well, food, I think, is what heals us. Mm -hmm. And, um, and rather than being something that separates us, if we get together as a group and we do this together and we enjoy this together, yeah. then it brings us together. Exactly. Exactly. And, um, so what I'm going to do now is take just a little bit of jack cheese. Now okay. what I did was I put just a little bit of oil on the bottom of this pan so this doesn't stick. Good point. And we're going to put this in the oven and to give this something, a little something to steam in because uh -huh. we rehydrated these dry chilies. Oh, okay. So if we put it in the oven without any liquid, it's going to re, re dehydrate. Up. Right, okay. So we want to put a little bit of our cooking liquid in there. Oh, wow. Just a touch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the oven. And let it and let it um, and let it steam. Okay. And how? What, what temperature would you put it in the oven? I at? would put them in there on just on a broil oh, because oh, basically it. everything is already cooked. The dog smelling the chorizo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff is excited. He, he ain't no dummy. No, no so, doubt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this. We're gonna put it in there. All we need to do is melt the cheese. Oh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. So it everything's already long. cooked. No. Now what about the sauce? Now this is. Um, you really are from New York, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 that's awesome. All right. So what I'm gonna do is with this with the sauce. I'm gonna take this and we're gonna. Yeah. This is a little bit of chipotle mm. and tomato. Nice. Now, chipotle is a dried smoked jalapeno. Okay. Oh, really? Yes. I never realized that. Yes. Yeah, so what I do is if I'm doing something, let's say, let's go back to the vegetarian again or uh -huh. the vegan. If I'm doing something like a potato salad and I want to find smoke, but yeah. I don't want to use um, an animal product, I'll use just a little bit of chipotle and that gives you that kind of that smoky flavor. Oh, nice. And this, Good this, idea. This pairs really well with mushrooms. So, like, if you're doing, because barbecue season is in, mm -hmm. we're getting, going into barbecue season. Exactly. Brush your steaks with just a little bit of chipotle and honey, and that is a beautiful thing. Chipotle gives it a little kick, too, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I like call that. this the velvet donkey kick. <laughs> the velvet donkey kick. So, we're going to take, take just a little bit of our tomato sauce. Okay. And we're going to put that on our plate, and then through the magic of TV, yes, I'm going to go grab. I know. I love that. Now, and I want to point out also that when I made this recipe at home, yeah. I don't cook as often as she does. I would wear gloves okay. because I yeah. went to bed like this. <gasps> right. Yeah. Hot really, hands. Yeah. Literally. So be careful working with the chilies. Okay. And Nicole, also tell our viewers where they can go for more information sure. about the Santa Fe Cooking School. Um, SantaFeSchoolofCooking.com or 800-982-4688 for the class schedule. Okay. Perfect. And of course, when we return, we get to see the final delicious presentation through the magic of television and then the best part, we get to eat it. We'll be right back. <laughs> that looks so good. Well, Kristen's joined us in the kitchen, and we are so happy to say that you have completed the delicious meal. Tell everybody, Michelle, what you've made. This is a, an ancho chile relleno oh. uh, stuffed with beans and chorizo. Uh, a little bit of Jack cheese sprinkled on top, and by the way, there really was a man named Jack that lived in Monterey, California in the 1700s that had a dairy that made cheese. He was a real wow. person. See? I love these facts. You can learn all this at the Santa Fe School of Cooking. That's right, Nicole. You got it. So don't miss out. And of course, all that information right here on Casa.com. And we had a good time today. Thank yes. you. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Oh, thank we you. have to thank all of today's guests. I know Sheriff is waiting in the back for a little taste of some food too, but we want to taste now. Can we taste? Absolutely, yeah, please. please do. You yeah, made it, it easy for us, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Here we go. Go, Kristen. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> this might be a big bite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's hope it's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, good. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, I'm going to eat the whole thing. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Now imagine mm. that with a nice fried egg on the top That's for breakfast. So mm. 
Mm. Bravo. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Bravo. day. Thank See you, you tomorrow. Should they bring umbrellas? Mm. Keep it handy tonight. Maybe. Excellent. Have a good day, everybody. All Thank right. you. Oh, You're my welcome. God. One more.